Hello friends! So, we are continuing with our fighting game from scratch in Unreal Engine. As you may remember, we have already added grappling attacks, set up the cameras and added controller support. Today, we are finally going to control both fighters with two gamepad controllers. We will also add a smart check, just in case if only one gamepad controller is connected to the game and we will then switch one of players back to the keyboard. In the next videos we are going to work with hit attacks, special abilities, switching characters, hit reactions like knockdown or knockout, etc. But first, while in this series we are creating a fighting game completely from scratch, there is a more professional way. It would actually take hundreds and thousands of working hours to create and test a production-ready fighting game like Mortal Kombat or Tekken, and it would cost a company hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, if it is your actual goal, and if this is why you started watching this video, I recommend you to still follow this tutorial series to get the in-depth understanding of the principles. But, as the solution for your game, I would recommend using my true fighting game engine for Unreal Engine, which is available on Epic Store. It already implements features you may need in a AAA fighting game. You can easily manage multiple characters, attacks, combos and hit reactions through its blueprint system. It also provides a multiplayer support for local and network multiplayer fighting games. I am constantly working on improvements, so if you have an idea of your own fighting game, it is the best choice for you. You can find the link to the true fighting game engine in the description below this video. And now let's start with the tutorial. Right, friends, so in the previous lesson we have implemented functionality when we control the left player with the keyboard and the right player with the gamepad. But what if we saved some money and we have two gamepads now? So, we would possibly like to be able to control the first player with a keyboard and with the first gamepad. And our friend, who plays the multiplayer fighting game with us, just controls his player with the second gamepad controller. And today's lesson is going to be dedicated to the... To implementing two gamepads functionality. So, let's start with some housekeeping. Let's uh, open our, our content drawer and delegate to content, third person, input. And let's rename our input ma map and context data assets to Let's rename them to be more clear what do they implement. So let's right click the IMC default, select rename, and at the end we add underscore and we type TB, KB, it means keyboard versus EP, or EB underscore EP. So it means that we use it when the first player is controlled with the keyboard and the second is controlled with the gamepad controller. And now let's do the same for the second uh, input map in context, which is for a 2D game. You remember we have an arena mode and a 2D mode. Let's just before the 2D game, after the default, Type as well e k b underscore g p. All right, and then underscore we have that to begin. All right. Now let's save all, and it changes nothing, but it will just make it more comfortable for us to work in the future. Now let's open our level blueprint and 
I hope you remember all of this. And you know, we actually have a possibility in our Unreal, in our wonderful Unreal Engine 5 to get to know whether or not we do have connected two gamepads. Well, we actually have a possibility to uh, figure out how many game paths are we connected? Have we connected to our game? Is it zero, no game path, one game path, two game paths, three game paths? And now we are going to act with uh, this knowledge. Because if we only have one game path, then we will use our old scheme when the left uh, player is controlled with the keyboard and the right player is controlled with the single gamepad. But if we detect that we have two gamepads attached to our machine, then we will connect them all to our game and both fighters will be controlled by gamepads. All right? But you know, we will do all, the, all of this step by step to keep the things clear. So first we will just implement the two game paths functionality without uh, this uh, option to determine whether one game path is uh, attached or two game paths. Right now we assume that we already have two game paths attached to our machine and we will implement control of both our fighters with two gamepads controllers. All right. So, first of all, let's do some preparation work. You know, let, let's in our outliner select the BP settings and check that is a random mode just to be able to control all directions when we, we will be testing what we will have. Uh, you know. Sometimes I, may, I can make a mistake, but I always try to fix them be before the end of the video. So, let's first duplicate this IMC default KB, KBGP and rename it to 2GP player 1. This controller will be will be responsible for the controls of the player one when we have two game paths attached. But we will also duplicate this input mapping context. And see it has automatically been renamed to the almost the same name, but with the player two. Right? Uh, what will be the difference? You remember when we controlled our players, uh, our left player with the keyboard and the right player with the gamepad, we had to negate our gamepad Y axis to to mirror the movements by that axis. So for now. I believe we should, you see, I, I open the IMC default to gamepads player one. I expand the gamepad left thumbstick and I expand the negate modifier. And I definitely should uncheck the Y axis and as far as it as I can imagine, we should negate the x-axis. Possibly, possibly not, but we will see it when we test it out. And we save. All right. And relating, relate what is related to the input mapping context for the player 2 with two gamepads, we can actually remove all the keyboard keys or we can have them they won't work for the second player anyway. Let's just delete them. Doesn't matter. 
we just have with our game pattern for jump we delete the space bar and for look tag we only leave our game path functionality all right and for the ia move we also expand the game path left thumb stick to the axis and for the negate i believe uh, we, leave, we leave here that negate by the y axis but we will check this all later all right so let's duplicate for our d2d d mode let's duplicate our input man mapping contexts uh, for two game paths right now too so let's duplicate but let's rename the keyboard game, game path to the two game paths at player one right right and here as it is the player one we also uncheck the negate uh, by y axis for this player uh, and we actually don't touch the x axis because it is a 2d mode like mortal kombat and the x axis actually doesn't matter we don't receive this input all right now let's duplicate this newly created context once again once again and we name it to almost the same the same name two game paths but for the player yeah we have plenty of them but uh, maybe later to have some housekeeping we will drop them all to all of them to different folders all right but for now it is pretty clear so let's continue now let's open our level blueprint and how do we actually enable two game paths do you remember when we wanted to control our first fighter with the keyboard and the second fighter with a single gamepad controller con connected to our PC we have added this node and we have set skip assigning gamepad to player one now let's just uncheck this option all right and now the gamepad is going to be assigned to the player to the first player next uh, did you remember somewhere in the user blueprint in the character blueprint i have said that when we that when um, con player controllers are being constructed they need some time before uh, two of them say are constructed so first of them is constructed and we need to wait a little bit to get the second controller constructed as well otherwise it uh, may cause troubles and that's why in this sequence when we create a local player our second fighter let's add a delay node and 0 0.2 is going to be all right and we compile and we save all right now what do you think if we start the game now i will try to predict i think that both players both game paths will work and will con control fighters but both of them will use our input mapping context that we created in the previous lesson this keyboard gamepad where the axis y axis of our left thumb stick is negated to be to be used for the second player Let, let's check it out run the game 
and I get one game path. Uh huh. You know, when I when I move the thumbstick right, my player runs left, and when when I press left, it runs right. And now I get in my hands uh, the second game part. And for the second player, everything works just fine. Uh huh. Yeah. And x axis is also negated for the first player. But for the second player, it works just fine. And that is why we have created all these additional mapping contexts. And now. We are going to fix this trouble. In our content drawer, we navigate to content, third person, blueprints. We open the BP fighter character. And if you remember, in the previous lesson, we have added a player num variable. And when we constructed our players, our characters in the level blueprint, we have set up these numbers to the left player, it has a number 0, and to the right player, it has a number 1. So let's get back to the BP fighter character and let's get a link to self, a reference to self. Let's get a variable player num. All right. And let's compare it to zero. Let's drag a connection and add an equal node. And then we add a branch if it is true or not. And where are we going to? make this check from I, st I think we will have to make it two times for uh, for the arena mode and for the 2d mode so right now we check it for the arena mode you remember this branch checks this so if you are in arena mode we drag a connection from the branch and if the player has the index zero, then we will call add to him one mapping context. And if it is it is the second player, then we add another mapping context. So let's duplicate this node. I just select it and press Control D on my keyboard. And let's select the true execution pin for the zero fighter to the first mapping context and the pulse to the second mapping context. But now we need to set up the appropriate mapping contexts. Uh-huh. And you remember we have created this IMC default two game paths mapping context for the player one and we select this context here and for the second mapping context we select another mapping context emc default two game paths for player two and now let's compile and we and we have an error and you know why? Because for this mapping context, which was initially here, we have provided the enha enhanced input local player subsystem, but we need to also provide it for this context as well. All right? We compile and we say, and what happens if we run the game? I get one game part, all right, and the second player works and as intended. And I get another game part, and yes, the first player 
works as intended as well. Uh -huh. And I can also control my cross player with the keyboard. What I am doing right now. Right. And now let's implement the same check for our 2D mode. Let's select this newly created check. Just copy it and place something here. I press Ctrl V. All right. And here, when we go to our 2D mode mapping contexts, now we want to make some. Oh, skipping. Let's let's do what we want. What we need to do. Let's select all the graphs are that are below, and move there a little bit, a little bit down. Ah, move them a little bit down. All right, and this one as well. And what we have here, move a little bit up. And let's expand this comment frame color or nodes. Right. Ah, now this one tick. We'll also move up. More clear. So now, after we performed again this check for the player number, let's duplicate the mapping context for the 2D mode as well. Duplicate it and if it is the left player, then we connect one mapping context, and if it is my pen context, All right? And of course, we provide this target again. Do not repeat that mistake. And now let's provide right mapping contexts. So, for the first mapping context, we provide IMC default to game paths player one for 2D game. All right. And for the second mapping context, for the second fighter, we correspondingly provide IMC default to game paths player two for 2D game. Great. And we compile and we save. And let's check it out. Let's select the settings from our outliner and uncheck the Is Arena option. So we have a 2D mode. And now I get one game part. And yes, my first player works as it should work. And now I get the second game part. And my second player doesn't work as it should work. And we will fix it really easy. We go to input. And we select the IMC, IMC default to game pass for the player 2 for 2D game. All right. And it seems we should negate the Y axis for the player 1. Yes, we didn't negate. And we save everything and we run the game. And now in the 2D mode, our player one works as intended. And I get my second gamepad controller. And my player two works as intended as well. And now finally, we want to perform a really simple and quick check 
uh, to check whether we have two game paths uh, connected to our PC, to our game, or whether we have only one game path. So we will be controlling our first player with the keyboard and the second with the game path. Uh, we can do this check really easy. Uh, let's open our level blueprint. So from the event begin play, inside the third person map blueprint, let's drag a connection and start typing get all connected and get the all connected input devices. We break this link and the the return value will return the number of our controllers of the game paths uh, connected to our game. So let's get it and let's if this number is equal to two. All right. And actually, if it is equal to, then we we should leave this entire graph working as it is but if it is one only one game path is connected so it is not equal to let's drag a connection from the output pin and type not boolean and then we are going to skip the first player from assigning his controller to the game path one so we get the situation uh, described uh, one or two lessons ago when we set it to true and then we skip the first player and it is being controlled with the keyboard and the second player will be controlled with the second gamepad but if we actually have two gamepads uh, connected to our game then it's all right because um, the inverted boolean will be false and we will not skip the first player, all right? So we compile and we save. And right now I have only one gamepad connected to the PC. And I start the game and I get into trouble. Ah, and I know. <laughs> Let's open the level blueprint again. I just forgot to connect the output execution pin from our get all connected input devices to the rest of the logic <laughs> of the level blueprint. So we should do it. You see, we connect the execution pin to the rest. Right? So now I only have one gamepad attached to the game and I try a keyboard and the keyboard controls the left fighter and now I try to control with the gamepad and it controls the right fighter, right? And right, right now I connect this second gamepad to my PC and I wait until it, uh -huh. and you see this little notification at the right bottom that a new input device has been connected and now I have two game paths connected to the game and let's run the game now once again and yes now I control the right fighter with my newly connected game path and I control the left player with my first game path and that's all right and yes, it was that simple. I hope it was helpful. Uh, in the next lessons, we are going to continue with the fighting game and we will be adding attacks. We will add hitboxes, uh, hit reactions. We will finally add damages, different types of damages from different attacks. Uh, attack combos, uh, hit reactions like knockouts and knockdowns special effects, abilities, etc. And of course, I am also going to release in some new tutorials on the true fighting game engine really soon. Let me remind, the true fighting game engine is my personal project for the Unreal Engine. 
which already contains all the logic and all the functionality required to build a fighting game without much effort. So you may focus on your needs and forget about uh, these basic things like implementing the logic of the fighting game itself. And that's it for today. Have a nice day and see you next time. Goodbye.